The first agreement. Be impeccable with your word. The first agreement is the most important one, and also the most difficult one to honor. It is so important that with just this first agreement, you will be able to transcend to the level of existence I call heaven on earth. The first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. It sounds very simple, but it is very, very powerful. Why your word? Your word is the power that you have to create. Your word is the gift that comes directly from God. The Gospel of John in the Bible, speaking of the creation of the universe, says, In the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. Through the Word you express your creative power. It is through the Word that you manifest everything. Regardless of what language you speak, your intent manifests through the Word. What you dream, what you feel, and what you really are will all be manifested through the Word. The Word is not just a sound or a written symbol. The Word is a force. It is the power you have to express and communicate, to think, and thereby to create the events in your life. You can speak. What other animal on the planet can speak? The Word is the most powerful tool you have as a human. It is the tool of magic. But like a sword with two edges, your word can create the most beautiful dream, or your word can destroy everything around you. One edge is the misuse of the word, which creates a living hell. The other edge is the impeccability of the word, which will only create beauty, love, and heaven on earth. Depending upon how it is used, the word can set you free, or it can enslave you even more than you know. All the magic you possess is based on your word. Your word is pure magic, and misuse of your word is black magic. The word is so powerful that one word can change a life or destroy the lives of millions of people. Some years ago, one man in Germany, by the use of the word, manipulated a whole country of the most intelligent people, he led them into a world war with just the power of his word. He convinced others to commit the most atrocious acts of violence. He activated people's fear with the word, and like a big explosion there was killing and war all around the world. All over the world humans destroyed other humans because they were afraid of each other. Hitler's word, based on fear-generated beliefs and agreements, will be remembered for centuries. The human mind is like a fertile ground where seeds are continually being planted. The seeds are opinions, ideas, and concepts. You plant a seed, a thought, and it grows. The word is like a seed, and the human mind is so fertile. The only problem is that too often it is fertile for the seeds of fear. Every human mind is fertile, but only for those kinds of seeds it is prepared for. What is important is to see which kind of seeds our mind is fertile for, and to prepare it to receive the seeds of love. Take the example of Hitler. He sent out all those seeds of fear, and they grew very strong, and beautifully achieved massive destruction. Seeing the awesome power of the word, we must understand what power comes out of our mouths. One fear or doubt planted in our mind can create an endless drama of events. One word is like a spell, and humans use the word like black magicians, thoughtlessly putting spells on each other. Every human is a magician, and we can either put a spell on someone with our word, or we can release someone from a spell. We cast spells all the time with our opinions. An example. I see a friend, and give him an opinion that just popped into my mind. I say, hmm, 
I see that kind of color in your face in people who are going to get cancer. If he listens to the word, and if he agrees, he'll have cancer in less than one year. That is the power of the word. During our domestication, our parents and siblings gave their opinions about us without even thinking. We believed these opinions, and we lived in fear over these opinions, like not being good at swimming, or sports, or writing. Someone gives an opinion and says, Look, this girl is ugly. The girl listens, believes she is ugly, and grows up with the idea that she is ugly. It doesn't matter how beautiful she is. As long as she has that agreement, she will believe that she is ugly. That is the spell that she is under. By hooking our attention, the word can enter our mind and change a whole belief for better or worse. Another example. You may believe you're stupid, and you may have believed this for as long as you can remember. This agreement can be very tricky, causing you to do a lot of things just to ensure that you are stupid. You may do something and think to yourself, I wish I were smart, but I must be stupid or I wouldn't have done that. The mind goes in hundreds of different directions, and we could spend days getting hooked by just that one belief in our own stupidity. Then one day, someone hooks your attention, and using the word lets you know that you are not stupid. You believe what the person says and make a new agreement. As a result, you no longer feel or act stupid. A whole spell is broken just by the power of the word. Conversely, if you believe you are stupid and someone hooks your attention and says, yes, you are really the most stupid person I have ever met, the agreement will be reinforced and become even stronger. Now let's see what the word impeccability means. Impeccable comes from the Latin peccatus, which means sin. The im in impeccable means without. So impeccable means without sin. Religions talk about sin and sinners, but let's understand what it really means to sin. A sin is anything you do that goes against yourself. Everything you feel or believe or say that goes against yourself is a sin. You go against yourself when you judge or blame yourself for anything. Being without sin is exactly the opposite. Being impeccable is not going against yourself. When you are impeccable, you take responsibility for your actions, but you do not judge or blame yourself. From this point of view, the whole concept of sin changes from something moral or religious to something common sense. Sin begins with rejection of yourself. Self-rejection is the biggest sin that you commit. In religious terms, self-rejection is a mortal sin, which leads to death. Impeccability, on the other hand, leads to life. If I see you in the street and I call you stupid, it appears that I'm using the word against you, but really I'm using my word against myself, because you're going to hate me for this and your hating me is not good for me. Therefore, if I get angry and with my word send all that emotional poison to you, I'm using the word against myself. If I love myself, I'll express that love in my interactions with you, and then I'm being impeccable with the word, because that action will produce a like reaction. If I love you, then you will love me. If I insult you, you will insult me. If I have gratitude for you, you will have gratitude for me. If I'm selfish with you, you'll be selfish with me. If I use the word to put a spell on you, you are going to put a spell on me. Being impeccable with your word is the correct use of your energy. It means to use your energy in the direction of truth and love for yourself. If you make an agreement with yourself to be impeccable with your word, just with that intention, the truth will manifest through you and clean all the emotional poison that exists within you. But making this agreement is difficult, because we have learned to do precisely the opposite. 
We have learned to lie as a habit of our communication with others, and more importantly, with ourselves. We are not impeccable with the Word. The power of the Word is completely misused in hell. We use the Word to curse, to blame, to find guilt, to destroy. Of course, we also use it in the right way, but not too often. Mostly we use the Word to spread our personal poison, to express anger, jealousy, envy, and hate. The Word is pure magic, the most powerful gift we have as humans, and we use it against ourselves. We plan revenge. We create chaos with the Word. We use the Word to create hate between different races, between different people, between families, between nations. We misuse the word so often, and this misuse is how we create and perpetuate the dream of hell. Misuse of the word is how we pull each other down and keep each other in a state of fear and doubt, because the word is the magic that humans possess, and misuse of the word is black magic. We are using black magic all the time without knowing that our word is magic at all. There was a woman, for example, who was intelligent and had a very good heart. She had a daughter whom she adored and loved very much. One night she came home from a very bad day at work, tired, full of emotional tension and with a terrible headache. She wanted peace and quiet, but her daughter was singing and jumping happily. The daughter was unaware of how her mother was feeling. She was in her own world, in her own dream. She felt so wonderful and she was jumping and singing louder and louder, expressing her joy and her love. She was singing so loud that it made her mother's headache even worse, and at a certain moment the mother lost control. Angrily she looked at her beautiful little girl and said, Shut up, you have an ugly voice. Can you just shut up? The truth is that the mother's tolerance for any noise was non-existent. It was not that the little girl's voice was ugly. But the daughter believed what her mother said, and in that moment she made an agreement with herself. After that, she no longer sang, because she believed her voice was ugly and would bother anyone who heard it. She became shy at school, and if she was asked to sing, she refused. Even speaking to others became difficult for her. Everything changed in the little girl because of this new agreement. She believed she must repress her emotions in order to be accepted and loved. Whenever we hear an opinion and believe it, we make an agreement, and it becomes part of our belief system. This little girl grew up, and even though she had a beautiful voice, she never sang again. She developed a whole complex from one spell. The spell was cast upon her by the one who loved her the most, her own mother. Her mother didn't notice what she did with her word. She didn't notice that she used black magic and put a spell on her daughter. She didn't know the power of her word, and therefore she isn't to blame. She did what her own mother, father, and others had done to her in many ways. They misused the word. How many times do we do this with our own children? We give them these types of opinions, and our children carry that black magic for years and years. People who love us do black magic on us, but they don't know what they do. That is why we must forgive them. They don't know what they do. Another example. You awake in the morning feeling very happy. You feel so wonderful you stay one or two hours in front of the mirror making yourself beautiful. But one of your best friends says, what has happened to you? You look so ugly. Look at that dress you're wearing. You look ridiculous. That's it. That is enough to put you all the way down in hell. Maybe this girlfriend just told you this to hurt you. And she did. She gave you an opinion with all the power of her word behind it. If you accept the opinion, it becomes an agreement now, and you put all your power into that opinion. That opinion becomes black magic. These types of spells are difficult to break. The only thing that can break a spell is to make a new agreement based on truth. The truth is the most important part of being impeccable with your word. On one side of the sword 
are the lies which create black magic, and on the other side of the sword is the truth which has the power to break the spell of black magic. Only the truth will set us free. Looking at everyday human interactions, imagine how many times we cast spells on each other with our word. Over time, this interaction has become the worst form of black magic, and we call it gossip. Gossip is black magic at its very worst because it is pure poison. We learned how to gossip by agreement. When we were children, we heard the adults around us gossiping all the time, openly giving their opinions about other people. They even had opinions about people they didn't know. Emotional poison was transferred along with the opinions, and we learned this as the normal way to communicate. Gossiping has become the main form of communication in human society. It has become the way we feel close to each other, because it makes us feel better to see someone else feel as badly as we do. There's an old expression that says, Misery likes company, and people who are suffering in hell don't want to be all alone. Fear and suffering are an important part of the dream of the planet. They are how the dream of the planet keeps us down. Using the analogy of the human mind as a computer, gossip can be compared to a computer virus. A computer virus is a piece of computer language written in the same language all the other codes are written in, but with a harmful intent. This code is inserted into the program of your computer when you least expect it, and most of the time without your awareness. After this code has been introduced, your computer doesn't work quite right or it doesn't function at all because the codes get so mixed up with so many conflicting messages that it stops producing good results. Human gossip works exactly the same way. For example, you're beginning a new class with a new teacher, and you've looked forward to it for a long time. On the first day of class, you run into someone who took the class before who tells you, Oh, that instructor was such a pompous jerk. He didn't know what he was talking about, and he was a pervert too, so watch out you are immediately imprinted with the word and the emotional code the person had when saying this. But what you're not aware of is his or her motivation in telling you. This person could be angry for failing the class or simply making an assumption based on fears and prejudices. But because you have learned to ingest information like a child, some part of you believes the gossip and you go on to the class. As the teacher speaks, you feel the poison come up inside you, and you don't realize you see the teacher through the eyes of the person who gave you that gossip. Then you start talking to other people in the class about this, and they start to see the teacher in the same way, as a jerk and a pervert. You really hate the class, and soon you decide to drop out. You blame the teacher, but it is gossip that is to blame. All of this mess can be caused by one little computer virus. One little piece of misinformation can break down communication between people, causing every person it touches to become infected and contagious to others. Imagine that every single time others gossip to you, they insert a computer virus into your mind, causing you to think a little less clearly every time. Then imagine that in an effort to clean up your own confusion and get some relief from the poison, you gossip and spread these viruses to someone else. Now imagine this pattern going on in a never-ending chain between all the humans on earth. The result is a world full of humans who can only read information through circuits that are clogged with a poisonous, contagious virus. Even worse are the black magicians or computer hackers who intentionally spread the virus. Think back to a time when you or someone you know was angry with someone else and desired revenge. In order to seek revenge, you said something to or about that person with the intention of spreading poison and making that person feel bad about him or herself. As children, we do this quite thoughtlessly. But as we grow older, we become much more calculated in our efforts to bring other people down. Then we lie to ourselves and say that person received a just punishment for their wrongdoing. When we see the world through a computer virus, it is easy to justify the cruelest behavior. What we don't see 
is that misuse of our word is putting us deeper into hell. For years we've received the gossip and spells from the words of others, but also from the way we use our word with ourselves. We talk to ourselves constantly, and most of the time we say things like, Oh, I look fat. I look ugly. I'm getting old. I'm losing my hair. I'm stupid. I never understand anything. I will never be good enough, and I am never going to be perfect. Do you see how we use the word against ourselves? We must begin to understand what the word is and what the word does. If you understand the first agreement, be impeccable with your word, you begin to see all the changes that can happen in your life. Changes first in the way you deal with yourself, and later in the way you deal with other people, especially those you love the most. Consider how many times you have gossiped about the person you love the most to gain the support of others for your point of view. How many times have you hooked other people's attention and spread poison about your loved one in order to make your opinion right? Your opinion is nothing but your point of view. It is not necessarily true. Your opinion comes from your beliefs, your own ego, and your own dream. We create all this poison and spread it to others just so we can feel right about our own point of view. If we adopt the first agreement and become impeccable with our word, any emotional poison will eventually be cleaned from our mind and from our communication and our personal relationships, including with our pet dog or cat. Impeccability of the word will also give you immunity from anyone putting a negative spell on you. You will only receive a negative idea if your mind is fertile ground for that idea. When you become impeccable with your word, your mind is no longer fertile ground for words that come from black magic. Instead, it is fertile for the words that come from love. You can measure the impeccability of your word by your level of self-love. How much you love yourself and how you feel about yourself are directly proportionate to the quality and integrity of your word. When you are impeccable with your word, you feel good, you feel happy, and at peace. You can transcend the dream of hell just by making the agreement to be impeccable with your word. Right now, I'm planting that seed in your mind. Whether or not the seed grows depends upon how fertile your mind is for the seeds of love. It's up to you to make the agreement to be impeccable with your word. Nurture this seed, and as it grows in your mind, it will generate more seeds of love to replace the seeds of fear. The first agreement will change the kind of seeds your mind is fertile for. The first agreement is one you should make if you want to be free, if you want to be happy, if you want to transcend the level of existence that is hell. To be impeccable with your word is very powerful. Use the word in the correct way. Use the word to share your love. Use white magic, beginning with yourself. Tell yourself how wonderful you are, how great you are. Tell yourself how much you love yourself. Use the word to break all those teeny, tiny agreements that make you suffer. Just this one agreement can change your whole life. Impeccability of the word can lead you to personal freedom, to huge success and abundance. It can take away all fear and transform it into joy and love. Just imagine what you can create with impeccability of the word. You can transcend the dream of fear and live a 